there, everybody. This is Mel Allen. This week in baseball, everyone's been knocking on Baltimore's first place door, but the Orioles won't let them in. Releasing pennant pressure. This is getting crazier. And a big boo by the fans. That's because he didn't throw it to them. Major leaguers look back on their little league days in a trip down memory lane. So zoom in and watch it all. Coming right up on This Week in Baseball. How about those Baltimore Orioles? In Baltimore, these days they call the Orioles pit bulls. They won't give up the lead without a fight. It held off Boston, Toronto, and now Milwaukee in games that could have taken them out of first place. They've shown their resiliency, their ability to come back, and not to let yesterday bother them. Uh, that's been the motto all year long. Take every game uh, as one particular game. No, don't dwell on the, on the present, don't dwell on the past, but really just look towards the future. And uh, I think that's allowed them to be in the pennant race, even though they haven't played as well as they have. It's a team that everybody expects to fall flat on their face, but I don't think they're going to. They've got very good Major League Baseball players. Everybody says, oh, they don't have enough uh, you know, enough veterans, or there are a lot of young kids. Well, just because they're young doesn't mean they can't play baseball. They're a very young ball club, but they're a very good ball club, and they're very level-headed. Stan Jefferson, yet another member of Baltimore's cast of newcomers. He helped the Orioles win 8 out of 10 to fly into September, still holding on to first place. The fans are happy because we're playing hard. Now, I think they, you know, they, they can see and they acknowledge the, the hard play that we're playing. I mean, you know, guys are making great defensive plays and we're doing a little things like, you know, moving guys over and, and situation baseball. And I, the pitchers are doing one heck of a job keeping us in the ball game. And uh, really, it's basic baseball is just winning games for the audience. And how about bullpen stopper and proud owner of 22 saves, Greg Olson. At the age of 22, he's one of four Baltimore rookies holding down the enviable job of pitching in the pennant race. I'm still coming in and four to two, five to two, whatever it takes, and I'll, I'll get out there and I'll just do my job. And it hasn't been very pretty all year. I'll, you know, get a couple guys on base and have to bail myself out of a jam, but I've been doing it all year and getting lucky, I guess. So uh, I don't see any problem with it. I don't see any difference. You know, it's just now that if I don't do the job and we lose, then it's their game closer. No one's brought the Orioles closer to a division flag than the Iron Man at shortstop, Cal Ripken, on the way to 20 homers and 80-plus RBIs for the eighth time. And he's not missed a game in seven years, the third longest playing streak of all time. Looking back over, uh, there's been a lot of days where you wake up after a Saturday extra inning game with a couple rain delays mixed in, and you've got to come back to the ballpark Sunday morning, and you think, well, God, would it be good to maybe have a day off at this point? Um, but then as the day goes on, you might get two or three hits, knock in the game-winning run, and that makes you uh, don't feel so tired after the ball game's over. My desire to play the game uh, has always been there. I want to be the one out there in the game. I don't want to be the one over here sitting and watching. There's no way to describe it. I don't think I have any secret that, uh, that I can dispel at this point, and then everybody will play a thousand consecutive games. It's just uh, a little bit of luck and a lot of desire. Lucky for the Blue Jays, their call for more offense brought Mookie Wilson, who was dealt to Toronto along with ex-Met Lee Mazzilli. As for Mookie, he dialed H for hot, a 14-game hitting streak plus an average of 340. I knew that I still could play, but I think every athlete starts to doubt themselves when they get a certain age, and particularly when you're not getting an opportunity to go out there and play every day. And I must admit, there was some doubt in my mind, and this here is giving me an opportunity to satisfy myself and other people that I still can play Major League Baseball. George Bell is letting everyone know he can still hit, and now he's hitting better than ever in the Sky Dome, which has become a whole lot friendlier to the home team. 
Although Bell has toned down the power, he's increased the contact. And behind Bell's 21-game hitting streak, the Blue Jays have won 12 of 16 to stay right behind the Orioles. A big help in the pitching department has been rookie reliever Mauro Gaza. He got a crash course on the fork ball and won four straight. As for Toronto's ace, Dave Steeb, one is truly the loneliest number. In this game against the Brewers, he flirted with yet another no-hitter. But this play in the sixth inning spoiled it. Over one with a walk, and it's knocked down by Gruber. He scrambles after it, will have no play. Robin Yount spoiled the bid, but Steve shut him down the rest of the way to end up with a shutout and his fifth one-hitter. Meanwhile, the Red Sox looked ready to roll in the stretch thanks to a recharged offense that leads the majors in batting average and runs scored. Their recent nine-game winning streak boosted the Red Sox right back into the pennant picture. Ellis Burks returned to duty, and he's been his usual steady self, hitting 300 with a fair supply of pop. Delivers and a towering drive. He's hit it a Biggest numbers belong to Nicky Soski, the league's top run producer with 95 RBIs, and Boston's heaviest hitter with 26 homers. Prancing. Now, this week's quiz brought to you by today's Chevy truck. Oakland's Mike Moore could win 20 games. So could Dave Stewart. Now, can you name the last teammates to win 20? Fans, welcome to a wild afternoon at Wrigley Field. The first place Cubs were getting pounded by the Astros, and unexpectedly, the pounding came from Rafael Ramirez, seen here clearing the bases in the fifth inning. Drives one high and deep to left. McClendon back on the track, and that ball's gone. A grand slam home run for Rafael Ramirez. Ramirez now has seven runs batted in in this game. And after five innings, Houston led nine to nothing. But you know, it ain't over till it's over. And it was far from over in the seventh when Dwight Smith came up. Line drive right field. Another level score. Nine to five now. Smith was also a hero on defense. After replacing Andre Dawson, he kept the Astros from scoring in the eighth inning. A key play, because in the bottom of the inning, Houston now leading 9-5. to five. The Cubs scored still more. Capping the comeback, none other than Mr. Smith. There's a fly ball to tie it up. Score easily. The game is tied. Still tied in the bottom of the 10th inning. The Astros got slapped by the Cubs yet again. Bases loaded, and guess who? Dwight Smith. have definitely not been going the Astros' way. In St. Louis, Alex Trevino hit a one-out single in the first inning, but Trevino forgot he'd been switched out of the second spot in the order. Whitey Herzog was right on the case, and soon everybody else was. The umps called Trevino out, but the problem didn't end there. And things only got more confusing when Rafael Ramirez came up. When the proper batter is called out because he has failed to bat in turn, the next batter shall be the batter whose name follows that of the proper batter thus called out. 
That implies to me that Ramirez should be called out. Yeah, but I think you've totally confused me, and and now I want to know. All I've done is read you the rules. Yeah, well, that's even more confusing. <laughs> you need a lawyer now, don't you? Anyway, Ramirez flew out to end the inning, but you know what? The inning wasn't over. Not according to the still puzzled Whitey Herzog. So another conference, another ruling. Trevino's at bat does not count. Ramirez is out. There are only two down, and Kevin Bass is up. Oh, man. Bass strikes out, and now the official version of the Astros' first inning has been recorded. Thank goodness. And now for surprising developments in St. Louis as Pedro Guerrero and company have pulled into the race. One-two pitch, and it will go in the left center field base hit. Leading the Cardinals to 12 wins in 17 games, Guerrero has been mighty tough in the clutch. He's also stacked high the RBI count with 91. Mighty dandy numbers for the slugger who's been slugging less and slapping the ball more. Back in 1985, I got problems with my, my left wrist and I uh, haven't been able to hit balls that, you know, like I used to. So now I, uh, I think I became a smarter hitter. I, uh, I'm trying to go the other way more, especially playing at that big ballpark. I hit a lot of good balls there and they ain't going nowhere. So I got to be a different hitter now. No need for Joe McGrain to change his stuff. In August, he went 6-0 and to become the league's first 18-game winner. Not many figured Whitey's gang to be in it come September. Meanwhile, down the road in Kansas City, the Royals came out of hiding to win 18 out of 23. Brett Saberhagen, sporting his Cy Young form of 85, has gone 16 and 5 with seven straight wins. What people have to realize about Saberhagen is that he's maturing. Uh, he came to Kansas City at 160 pounds. Now he's about 195 pounds. His fastball is a lot livelier. Uh, he's he's always been a pinpoint pitcher. He works the corners. Great curveball. He's a one of those kind of pitchers that pitches. Uh, in a carefree style and very seldom misses a turn. And if you just keep going out there, uh, good things are going to happen. Nothing but great things from rookie Flash Gordon, who turned starter in July. Since then, he's won six games. Overall, a dazzling 16-5 and five record. One more reason for adding Kansas City to the mad scramble in the American League West. Now, the answer to this week's quiz, brought to you by today's Chevy truck. John Tudor of the 85 Cardinals, along with Joaquin Andahar, are the last teammates to win 20 games. Hey, kids, grab a glove. Latest batch of great plays coming up. Look lively, Hubie. First, Mario Diaz, Mariner. The Orioles, Rene Gonzalez. Cleveland, Brad Cummins. The White Sox, Russ Mormon. Sox teammate, Dave Gallagher. The Phillies, Dickie Thon. Houston Astro, Billy Doran. The Braves, Lonnie Smith. Atlanta teammate, Jeff Blouser. The Dodgers, Willie Randolph. Seattle's Darnell Coles. Atlanta's Jeff Treadway to Tommy Gregg. The Yankees, Don Mattingly. Cardinals, Tom Brunanski, and the Mets, Darryl Strawberry, with a novel way of letting off steam. This is getting crazier. And a big boo by the fans. That's because he didn't throw it to them. <laughs> hey, mister, look alive. You never know when something might fall into your lap. Or even worse, something might appear out of nowhere. Hey, it's all a matter of being in the right place at the right time. Or is it? Hey, Mookie. Not here. There. Now, what's here? For a 
frustration with a capital F. And you'll never win a spelling bee. The uh, John Lowenstein fan club holding their weekly meeting. Oh, I know how to spell Orioles. That's not even close. <laughs> well, no matter how you spell it, ball and glove are not in sync. This behavior can only lead to temptation, but you must refuse. Just testing you. Who's the brains behind this outfit anyway? What we need is the voice of reason. And he is not it. <laughs> Forget the dueling banjos. We have dueling umbrellas down the left field side. The guy ruined his umbrella for a ball he never got. <laughs> All right, uh, got to come back. Yeah, it's gone. Oh, man. And we'll be gone, too, with or without the real Bo Jackson. Now for a triumphant welcome home of the Trumbull Connecticut National League All-Stars who won the Little League World Series the first team from Connecticut to win the title since 1965. Trumbull's stunning upset of Taiwan took place in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. It was here 50 years ago that Little League Baseball began. But let's turn this story over to our roving reporter of yesteryear. Ladies and gentlemen, at Williamsport, Pennsylvania, the home of Little League Baseball, seven years ago, is where they first began the Little League activity. This year, there were some 3,500 leagues for the Little League franchises. 250,000 boys competing for the privilege of playing in the World Series. One of those boys was New York Yankees pitching coach, Billy Connors. In 1954, his Schenectady New York team won the Little League World Series. At age 12, it was one of the greatest thrills of my life. Uh, it was like, you know, the start of everything. I always had idols like Mickey Mantle and things like that, and I still have my uniforms from when I played. My Little League World Series uniforms, I still have those. And Boog Powell may not remember giving up 15 runs in three innings, but he'll never forget who gave him pitching tips. I remember that when we went to Williamsport, uh, Cy Young came out and talked to us, and I'll never forget the, the fact that he took time to come out there and talk to the kids and be nice to the kids and uh, that's one reason why I try to take a little bit more time now because I, re I remember how I felt as a kid and how kids look up to major league ball players and I try to take as much time as I can with kids now. This little leaguer may be hard to recognize but the Mets Keith Hernandez seems to have found his position at an early age. back on their little league days, major leaguers wouldn't trade in those memories for anything. I was the best pitcher in baseball in the little league. I was awesome. I was awesome. My best game ever. You ready for this? Pitched a perfect game. I was four for five. I had three home runs and a double, and I drove in 12 runs. That's a day. That's having a day, huh? I grew up in Gary, Indiana. I played at East Glen Park Little League, and I remember the highlight of my athletic career was my first home run over the fence. I hit off a guy named Jack Bailey. And Jack, if you're out there, thank you. You're the only guy I ever hit a home run off of. <laughs> One thing I remember about, about being a pitcher was, and that's probably why I'm a hitter today, is I remember when I was up at Battis Park, just like any other little kid, I had a fear of the baseball. But yet when I was on the pitcher's mound, I used that fear for me. I used to Throw it I hit more people a game. I hit eight to ten batters a game. So I said, I don't think I'm going to be a pitcher anymore. We went to the World Series, you know, when I was 14 and playing against Taiwan. We came up one game short, but it was a great experience playing in front of, you know, a pretty good crowd. One thing that I could do in Little League and that I can't do now, I could blow the ball by hitters. Uh, they couldn't hit me, but, but now uh, the only, seems like the only guy I'm blowing the ball by is Sean when I throw the ball out in left field. But, uh, I'm not the pitcher anymore that, that I was when I was 10 years old. I, I decided to let the guys that were bigger and stronger uh, take that, and, and I'd rather hit. For a game situation, Mom was always out there in the little scorekeeper's box right behind home plate. And I remember one specific game, I was coming around third base, and um, halfway between third and home, the, the catcher got the ball, and here I'm coming around. I'm always twice the size of everybody else. Came in, 
stuck my shoulder down just like my dad taught me and proceeded to push the guy, knock him all the way to the screen. Just so happened that the, that guy's mom was in the scoring box with my mom, and it just seemed as if I never heard the end of that, you know, yet my mom was getting all over me about trying to kill another opposing player and fessing up to his mother, and then my dad was over there patting me on the back saying, that's exactly the way I want you to play, son. Nice going, fellas. Time now for our Player of the Week, brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. We salute Von Hayes, who was ever so slick at Candlestick, where he led the Phillies to a 6-1 to win against the Giants, smacking three homers and driving in all six runs. That pushed his homer total to 21, more than twice as many as any other Philly. fans, we're going to visit with standout pitcher Mike Moore, once of the Mariners, now with a pennant contending Oakland A's. That's all for now, folks. See you next week on This Week in Baseball.